Ah, you've come back for more. That's very nice. Um, right, mitosis, meiosis, and inheritance. Quite a lot in this one. Starting point. Here's a cell. In the nucleus is the DNA. Uh, the DNA is made up of bases. A base will join to another base, join together, and that will make a string of DNA. Perhaps 10,000 bases. Maybe more. 20,000 sometimes, 30,000, makes a single gene. That means that all the instructions for making a single protein. Then there's going to be 10,000 genes perhaps on a chromosome. So we're talking about very long molecules all curled up inside the DNA. We want to copy the cell and uh, we need to copy all that DNA and, and then the cell will divide. Things you might be asked, how many chromosomes in a cell? In an animal cell, hum uh, sorry, in a human cell, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes. That's 46 in total. 22 so-called autosomal chromosomes, and then the sex chromosomes, X and Y, or X and X in a female. So 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 in total. DNA, reminding you, is made up of bases. We call the bases A, G, C and T and you might be asked to show how they pair up. So I've shown here that C pairs up with G and A pairs up with T. Now the way to remember that is straight edges T and A go together and curly letters C and G go together. Now extra information um, this is what a DNA molecule looks like. So it's a very complicated large molecule and A, G, C and T are shorts uh, for molecules adenine, cytosine, guanine and thiamine and they're shown in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Okay so let's talk about mitosis. We've got uh, normal cell division so skin cell, brain cell, bone cell, blood cell. This is how they divide. Most body cells, this is how they divide. Mitosis. So we're going to consider a simple cell with just two chromosomes. Chromosome 1 and chromosome 2. Uh, it's a standard body cell so it's got a pair of chromosome 1s and a pair of chromosome 2s. So, the first thing that happens is that the chromosomes move to the middle of the cell and uh, the DNA replicates. Now, just reminding you about what that's like, DNA strands separate and new bases are added to each of the strands. They know what sequence to follow because they've got a template. C pairs up with G, T pairs up with A and so on. So you end up with two new identical strands of DNA or duplicated chromosomes. So the chromosomes duplicate and we look like that and then half of the chromosome, one copied half of the chromosome goes to one end of the cell and the other half of the chromosome goes to the other end of the cell and they get dragged along by kind of little wires in the cells called spindles and they just get dragged from one end to the other. And there's no alternative about understanding that other than seeing it yourself. So watch this little video. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. If you're looking at the cell in the middle, you see uh, the chromosomes are lining up along the middle and then suddenly, wee they pull across to the ends. Quite an amazing sight. This is speeded up microscope uh, video. So it's ha it doesn't happen that fast. This is about speed it up about 20 30 times. Okay, to um, complete my animation, the cell then divides, um, splits down the middle, and you end up with two daughter cells, and they each have two pairs of chromosomes, so they are identical to their parent cell. That's very important. Right, now we're going to talk about meiosis. Meiosis is the cell division that you get for sex cell formation, to, to make 
gametes. Gametes are the names we give to sperm and egg cells. So we start off in exactly the same way. We get chromosomes duplicating as before and lining up along the central line of the cell. But this time, the chromosome pairs separate and move to opposite ends of the cells. Once there, then the division of the duplicated chromosomes takes place and the duplicated, duplicated chromosomes move to opposite sides of the cell and the cell splits into four. The result of that is that you get four daughter cells but they each only have one of each chromosome. So they only have one chromosome 1 and one chromosome 2. We call them haploid. The original cell was diploid, which means it had two of each chromosome. These are haploid, half of what we started with, and there are four cells rather than two. And they're OK, finally, we're going to have a question on inheritance. Consider a gene for eye colour that we will call B. There are two versions of the gene that we know about. Uh, big B causes brown eyes and little b causes blue eyes. It is recessive. Big B is dominant, which means if you have big B at all, it will show. So we've got this chappy, Fred. He's got blue eyes. That means he must have two copies of the recessive gene. If he had big B, uh, he would have brown eyes. So um, he's got little b, little b. And what we would like to know is how that happened, because both his parents have brown eyes. Now, Fred must have got the little b gene from his dad and the little b gene from his mum. So both parents must be big B, little b. The genotype must be big B, little b. Their phenotype, what you see, must be brown eyes. So uh, to work it out, we look at all the possible or both possible alleles from the sperm, from dad, big B, could be, or little b, passed down, and mum can pass down big B or little b. It's not always the case. Mum might only have big b gene, um, gene, but in this case, big b and little b. And if we work that out, we get a pattern like this, and we see there is a 1 in 4 chance of having little b, little b. So Fred is a little 25% chance miracle. Have a look at that in your revision guides, or talk to your teachers about it if you're not sure about it, but that is how you would work out a inheritance question.